Hello everyone. Welcome back to another session of RNA biology. So we were here uh, learning the importance of telomere length and how the length of telomere is influencing or enhancing the propensity of getting certain disorders such as cancer, cardiovascular disease, etc. So we were here in the previous class, the telomere length and cardiovascular disease. So they studied around 674 uh, Caucasian males and measured the mean telomere repeat copy number to a single gene copy number. So how it is compared this TS ratio is that uh, we know that around 11 KB telomere length will be there uh, per new chromosome in a given new chromosome average length. So we know 11 KB 11,000 divided by T2A G3 means 6 base. So 11,000 divided by 6 will give you a number and that is the total number of repeats of telomeres. So for convenience, let us keep it as 500. It is definitely not 500, but at least some time point or maybe let us keep it 1000. So 1000 into 6 is 6000. So if you have 6000 is the length of the telomere full length it's around 1000 copies of repeat will be there or let us keep one more example say if it is 12 kb 12 kb is the telomere length 12000 divided by 6 is equal to 2000 so the telomere copy number will be any time in an average number of telomere repeat will be less than 2000 repeats okay on an average because average length of telomere at start is 11,000 or 11 kb and it comes down to 4,000 or 4 kb the total length so if it is 12,000 is there you have around 2,000 copies of telomere so total number of telomere divided by a number of genes in that chromosome so in that mm, uh, genome so this is basically you are referring to as uh, a uh, TS ratio. So mean telomere repeat copy number to a single gene copy number. So you are bringing in a connection with the number of telomeric repeat per total gene that is available means a single copy gene. So they have found that decreased TS ratio that means Decreased TS ratio means the numerator is getting shorter and shorter. Denominator remains constant. So a decrease in TS ratio was significantly associated with the risk of myocardial infarction or coronary uh, heart problem. So you can see here as you get a healthy TS ratio like 3.5. That means the numerator T where the repeat is quite healthy and high. So when that number is quite high, you can see the chances of myocardial infarction is low as you can see here. But as the TS ratio decreases, it comes up to around 3.4. Why it is coming to 3.4? Because the numerator is getting lower. That is the T value, the repeats is getting lower and lower which brings down the TS ratio which enhances the rate of myocardial infarction. So message is clear that if the telomeric repeats are decreasing for whatsoever reason it can be due to aging, it can be due to stress, it can be due to you know various uh, biological conditions that can enhance the chances of getting myocardial infarction so cancer and age cancer and age uh, aging or the age uh, calendar age have got a good connection so let us see a percentage with a invasive cancer no matter which cancer it is you are having a in the uh, y-axis you have 10 20 30 40 like that 
and in the x axis you have three age groups it's been put here 0 to 39 age group 40 to 59 age group and 60 to 79 age group so this is the range of the age so you can see here as you grow old the chances of getting cancer go up quite exponentially like this is somewhat 39 that is the first group till second group there is a linear increase there is an increase there is no uh, it's not going parallel to the uh, x-axis there is a moderate increase is happening but once from your 59th age onwards there is a exponential increase because your general body's physiology lowers in its efficiency and this can allow the detection of a misbehaving or improper cell and that will allow the survival of this so called problematic cell and it has a connection with the telomerase activity also because cancer in order to survive mere dividing or division of that cell is not enough it has to have a proper support by the telomerase enzyme otherwise it cannot function the way it is uh, establishing cancer establishing in a host so cancer rises exponentially in the final decades of life this is a observed fact age dependent escalation is always seen uh, to be associated with high cancer risk so cumulative mutational load increased epigenetic gene silencing and telomere dysfunction are the possible causes for it we will revisit them once again so exposure to dna damaging agents is one of the important factor to be noted because if there is dna damage then only all the other problems comes in line if there is a damage then it has to be repaired and to repair first of all the damage should be sensed by the system and p53 comes into picture which is a tumor suppressor or guardian of the cell it has to stop the cell cycle and allow the dna repair genes to do their job if dna repair fails to fix it by uh, hr or nhej as you saw in the previous classes if they fail to repair that p53 marks the cell for apoptosis if all these things fail when p53 is mutated all these things has to fail because p53 is not doing its duty or it's not capable of doing its duty then it will automatically lead to cancer however cancer can establish as a disease if the immune system fails to detect this damaged uh, cell and this cancer cell is successfully turning on the telomerase activity if both of them are functional like immune system is strong immune system is able to detect that cell and dismantle it or get rid of that then that cell disappeared mad cell disappeared then cancer cannot come or the telomerase activity is not there naturally that cell will not be able to make a proper survival because telomere length gets shortened and it will start showing senescence it will reach the crisis and it will die or at least it will not propagate because crisis is helpful in many cases because it will not divide so cancer if it doesn't divide it is a good thing a cell is mad or it's a bad not working properly but as long as it is not dividing it is okay so this all are connected so exposure to dna damaging agents is one of the initial steps in getting cancer and then rest of the problems like shortened telomere length or uh, reactivation of telomerase uh, and various other uh, factors contribute together to establish cancer so mutations from proofreading and mismatch errors during dna replication so normally when dna is replicated there is always a possibility of having error and our dna polymerase have proofreading activity rna polymerase also have proofreading activity only the rna dependent rna polymerase from some viruses do not have proofreading activity 
So what is proofreading activity? When a DNA synthesis is occurring or when an RNA synthesis is, is occurring, it will have a degradation in the 3 prime to 5 prime direction. While synthesizing, it is eros erasing also. Means it is having an exonuclease activity. Same enzyme can do a backward reaction. So it's almost like you put three steps forward, put two steps backward. Again, put the five steps forward, put three steps backward. So by doing this, chances of having a wrong base is prevented. It is just like you imagine a situation, you want to say something. If you are saying spontaneously, that will not be a perfect sentence. It may not be a meaningful loaded sentence. However, if you are writing it down, then you will write something, then you will cut it, edit it and again you will make a better sentence and finally you will read it and see oh is it conveying sufficiently. So with the minimum words, you will be able to convey a strong meaningful sentence. So that is nothing but proofreading. Same thing happens during proofreading activity. So mutations if occurred in the DNA or RNA in spite of having proofreading or there is error in proofreading and sometimes mismatch errors will be there that is done with the help of a DNA excision repair or mismatch excision repair. If they fail then that can allow some mutation to persist in the system. So mutated phenotype will be persistent if these mutations are not detected in time, you end up getting a phenotype and we call it as a mutant phenotype or mutation phenotype. So inherent instability of tumor cell genomes. Many a times if there is a tumor or if there is a trouble in a given cell, what will happen? They are not following any of the cell rules like anchorage dependence not piling over uh, another cell or do not switch to glycolysis alone, follow Krebs cycle also for getting optimum use of uh, um, ATP production from uh, glucose molecule. So cells, cancer cells do not follow all these rules what normal cell is following. So cancer cells end up in wasting glucose, they make only two ATP from one glucose molecule instead of 38 ATP what a normal cell does and they can grow anchorage independent manner means they can grow anywhere and they lose cellular identity all these problems happen along with that you will end up having in unstable genomes also means like HeLa cells I mentioned in one of the earlier classes this is a um, very aggressive um, uterine cancer this people done when they did the um, genome studies, they found too many pieces of chromosome. Chromosomes break randomly, but still cell will find a way of surviving. Even the DNA is broken, there is lot of recombination, lot of joining here, there, because no proofreading, no repair, nothing happens. Some cell may die in this process, but it's okay. If it is not, if it is having a very problematic uh, mutation, that particular cell will die but another cell will continue. So it is a full chaos at genetic point of view. Cancer cell is full of chaos. There is no order. There is breakage, joining here, there, everywhere. Cancer can afford to have that. Why? Because it do not work efficiently. It do not follow the rules what a normal cell is following and it can afford to waste energy and it divides very fast. Hence, even if 10 cells are dying, the remaining cells are okay and the cancer cell will be able to run the show. So, let us now see what is genetic clock. Genetic clock is a interrelationship between the length of telomere and the number of times the cell can divide further. So, some connection is there. It's just like you may have seen in some uh, reality shows etc like they will say you have 1 lakh rupees 
you how you want to spend it you cannot put it in bank or invest you have to send in in a wise way how effectively you will use it so this is kind of a riddle like you can see in some games also children's games so you have given you are given a fixed amount so now everyone is given 1 lakh rupee how will you utilize it it depends with a lot of talent some people simply buy toys you know maybe waste it buy food and some people use some other creative way which can you know give returns so there are different ways same way the telomere number also is fixed so it has to be utilized by a cell how effectively it is preventing the shortening everything depends on maintaining the genetic clock so telomere length is given in the y axis and you have two groups of cells germ cells and somatic cell and cell division continues no matter which cell it is somatic cell also divides germ cells also divides as the time passes here technically you can say this cell division as the passage of time or age of the cell or the organism if an organism is living its cells will be dividing so it will continue now you have something called hair flick limit here so somatic cell the telomere length decreases as the cell division progress as the cell division move from 0 to a fixed number here somewhere in the middle the length of the telomere comes shorter and shorter and shorter then it will reach a stage called hair flick limit hair flick limit is a situation where the cell has to take the help of p53 and retinoblastoma proteins in order to make a living so two scenario is possible one is it will go through a phase of genetic instability that means it has reached a hair flick limit now the question is should we go with this limitations or should we fix it somehow the problem can we fix it so the idea is simple if a cell has reached a critical stage it has to make a call how are they going to proceed further as it the telomere length once the telomere length reached starting from here very high telomere length reached up to here because of cell division that is hair flick limit then as the division continues further so hair flick limit is reached at a stage where you have m1 senescence that is the first initiation first phase of senescence and then division is continuing with lots of difficulty and it reached an m2 phase that is called crisis phase crisis phase you end up having a genetic instability so once it reached genetic instability that is an alarm bell that is a real alarm bell because genetic instability means cells are having problem and cells will struggle and it will have real trauma present in the genome if it is not contained then that all troubles will be passed down to the next generation that means next uh, daughter cells so we have to understand that this if it fails if it uh, limit or the crisis stage is not handled properly this can go to if p53 and retinoblastoma are missing it can go to a cancerous phase so we should understand the normal point of a cancer progression or normal situation in which a cancer initiation can happen once it has reached hair flick limit that means genetic instability comes and it can start showing the real signs of cancer so let us see about the role of tumor suppressor genes p53 also known as tumor protein 53 is a transcription factor that regulates cell cycle and hence functions as a tumor suppressor rb that is retinoblastoma is a critical protein required for cell cycle exit when dividing retinal progenitors differentiate into post mitotic transition phase or cells that is post mitotic transition but rb protein can be seen in other cells also here we are saying as a example so both are 
important for maintaining a constant pace of cell division so they normal situation they continue to divide at the cost of telomeres telomere becomes short and short once the telomere length becomes shorter the ends the tips of the chromosome are less protected they are protected but their efficiency is coming down cells now enter secondary proliferative block first proliferative block was in m1 m1 phase where the um, haploid limit is reached and then you reach a crisis period that is m2 secondary and we call it as a crisis phase first crisis is haploid limit once the telomere length reached a particular phase second is once the telomere length become further down so it is characterized by short telomeres and this can lead to end to end fusion chromosomes can fuse end to end resulting in bicentric chromosome chromosomes with two centromeres and it will lead to anaphase bridges and apoptosis anaphase is the final stage of the mitosis it has got prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase so they reach the final stage of their um, cell cycle they or the cell separation next is telophase prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase telophase they literally separate that is final stage so they will have problem with anaphase and they show rampant genomic instability and widespread cell death will happen so this can lead to real complications uh, eventually giving rise to a cancerous phenotype so let us visit the genomic instability in a different angle as you see in this picture so here you have chromosomes which are fused because of which you are having two centromeres and when the bridge is trying to pull them apart the chromosome will break and this broken chromosome will enhance the fusion further so they can fuse again or they get attached or they get recombined elsewhere three chromosomes are dangerous and you will end up getting even circular chromosome so in cancer cell some chromosomes will appear circular so they can fuse in all possible ways as long as few genes are working like an organism will have say human require around 23000 genes for the normal survival but a cultured cell don't require that many genes as long as some genes are functional for the survival of the cell they will continue to survive in a a very unstable manner and since the cancer cells are blessed with fast division some mad cells mad cells here what i am saying cancer cell itself is mad cells but if some cells are so unstable they cannot survive they will die because they cannot produce some enzymes but that's okay because there is another cell which is not so bad will prevail so this will continue for longer time so this stage at crisis stage this will continue and you eventually end up in getting uh, chromosomes or fragmented pieces here and there like you can see here they will go into pieces and no two cancer cell will have similar looking genome so what we learn from here is that the chromosomes when they have some fusion that took place then this can lead to multicentric chromosome and in anaphase and telophase uh, there can be serious problem with the breakage of the chromosome because um, the um, spindle point spindle fibers bind on to both the centromere just like i told you one bag has got two handles two of you are holding it one pulling it towards the south another pulling towards the north the bag will tear into two pieces depending upon how strongly you are pulling like that is what is happening and that will lead to more broken chromosomes and this broken chromosomes can now 
effectively fuse either fuse themselves and look like bangles circular chromosome and or it can recombine elsewhere some other part of the chromosome or it can look quite weird in shape and this will continue this multicentric chromosomes will continue and every cycle they divide they can break so this is a cartoon what has been shown here like bad or misbehaving chromosomes or genome will continue to prevail and persist and you end up getting a unstable situation so we will learn more in detail about the um, telomeres and how genetic crisis uh, contribute to the instability of a cell in the next class thank you